All right, here we go. Another 3D printing. So I'm, I got my 3D printer. I got the Creality Ender 3V3SE and have spent um, some time yesterday doing some prints and already tore up my build plate because the prints uh, stuck so bad to the build plate that I couldn't get them off. I finally got them off, um, but just hand prying them off the build plate, pulled the top Teflon layer or whatever's on the build plate, pull it right off. So now I've got this chunk. I got a new build plate coming. I'm still learning. So uh, apparently when the print is done, you want to let it cool off before you try and pop it off the uh, build plate. And I was trying to pop it off right away while it was still warm and hot, um, about burnt my hand. So a couple of things there. So when you do a print, you want to let your build plate cool. I don't know how long, I guess it would depend on the size of the model or print that you've done. Uh, I've heard some people saying, um, you know, let it rest for an hour and then it should pop right off. I, somebody else was like, if you're still having problems, throw it in the freezer for 30 minutes. Um, let everything cool down and then it should, your models, when you just flex, they should just pop right off when you try to pull your model off, uh, your print off the build plate, or you may, if they're stuck a little bit tougher, you should just be able to gently flex the build plate in and out in various, uh, rotations and it should pop everything off. But anyway, um, so I'm still learning. <clears throat> I have used up all of the little tiny filament that came with the uh, Creality 3D printer, the Ender. So I have a black spool of filament coming today. So I just want to talk about where I go. Fangs.com is a great website that uh, is free. You can set up an account um, with, you know, I think Facebook or Google, or you can use email so you can, you can have that, but it's really nice because what this does is looks at other websites such as Thingiverse and Colts 3D printables, um, and looks over there so that it kind of acts as a Google of 3D print models. Uh, and you can, you can download them straight from here, or if I want to see, hey, this Lego box is pretty cool. It's going to pop open things. I can download it from here. Uh, some others, let's see if we can find one on another site. Some of them are pay. Sometimes you have to pay for them. Uh, this is $5 if you want that. Somebody made that. And they're like, hey, if, could you please give me five bucks for it? Eh, sure. Uh, or you have to become a member of the site, but I've, I've downloaded hundreds of models so far and I've only, um, seen paid versions that I wanted maybe twice I'm trying to find So if you can, you can just search here and it automatically goes to trending. Uh, you can also go to popular if you want to learn more about the grid affinity situation, or you're looking into, um, miniatures. Let's say, Hey, I want to do some fantasy miniatures. Uh, here, these are all, you know, I can look at this and it's free to download. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. You, I mean, they're not gatekeeping it at all. So if you want to download this guy and print him off, go for it. Uh, <clears throat> if you want this tree, get that tree. Well, that's 15 bucks, uh, which is fine. I ain't here to cause anybody, any shade. Here's a dragon dice box. I might be interested in this. Uh, and you can scroll down here to get some more information that the, the creator has uh, shared. Um, anybody else make this? There's a wizard dice box. I like this one. Uh, so, you know, he's got his pictures. There's the top. There's what it looks like when you slide the lid back. Got your dice in there. Looks like that. I'm going to download that. And it's just going to go to my downloads folder. Now, um, we're just looking at things. So you can also go to search. Let's say I want to find something here for uh, Magic the Gathering, MTG. Uh, I'm just going to do Magic the Gathering. And then here's all a bunch of different 
results. And I can see here, this one's from the Prusa Printables website. This one's on Thingiverse. Lots of Thingiverses here. Uh, and this is no different. Like if I want uh, this commander deck box, I'll just click on that link and it's going to take me to the printables website and then I can download it from there. I can see what it's going to look like. Uh, looks pretty slick. Uh, lots of times people will show what their prints, what it's looked like when they've printed it in whatever, you know, software, or, uh, not software, filament that they wanted to use. So it's pretty cool stuff. Uh, <clears throat> same thing. I can download this if I want. I don't play Commander, so I'm not going to download it. But you can download that. Most of these come in um, <clears throat> zip files. So I'm going to open up my folder here. I'm going to go to Downloads. And I've already got a couple of other things. So I'm going to click all those. Control-X to cut. To cut. Go to my documents, pretty uh, 3D printing files, and you can put these wherever you want. But let's look at this dragon dice box. Uh, I'm going to extract it, and you can do that however you'd like, whatever software. I think you use 7-zip uh, software to unzip it or extract it. I know Windows 10 has that unzipping uh, defaulted. So dra dragon dice box, I'm gonna move that into my games folder. Trying to keep things a little bit organized here. And if I double click my dragon vice or dragon box <clears throat> dice box, I can see all of the files that are attached with that uh, with this model. So let's take a look here. And um, I have the Cura uh, uh, Ultimaker Cura installed. So I'm going to click and drag. That's the lid side scales and let's do the box let's see what this looks drag and click and there is what it's gonna look like on the build plate uh, and this is just the stl file this is this is just how you share it this um, not a problem we can look under it uh, and here is where i want to adjust make any adjustments that i want to within the settings um, I usually run my fill density at 10% because I'm not doing anything structural that needs to hold a lot of weight. Triangles is fine with me as my infill pattern. Um, I have my standard uh, quality at 0.2 millimeters. I've got this set up to look at my Ender 3V3SE uh, at the 0.4 millimeter, millimeter nozzle. I'm using PLA. And I might make another video as to how to use all of this software for those who are just getting started. So once I have it in here, I'm going to go ahead and hit slice and the software is going to do what it's supposed to do, which is take a look at this model and try and figure out how it's going to print it. And in the lower right, you'll get some information. This says it's going to take four hours 55 minutes it's going to use 63 grams of material as i told it pla uh it's going to use 21.04 meters um and it's going to cost me a buck 44 to print that uh and so i can also hit preview up here at the top or i can hit preview down here at the bottom but when you hit preview it's going to show you what it would look like in the code you can see the individual lines of filament this is what it's gonna this is what the printer is actually going to put these little tiny lines of filament down so this is what it's going to look like on the print bed uh, on the right hand side you've got your uh, slice bar is what i'm going to call it but if i scroll this down it's going to look through the model and so you can see all of the levels you can also see it's the top number which you probably can't see this top number says 140 and the bottom says one so these are the layers of your model it's going to be 140 layers and if i want to i could even come down here pick a spot and then on this bottom section hit play and it's going to show um, me what the nozzle is going to look like as it as it builds out the model. And you can pause it anytime you want. Um, 
which is pretty cool. Uh, it's just a nice little feature. Uh, and I use this a lot to figure out, do I need infill? Maybe I don't need any infill because of the way this is tapered. Um, you know, it doesn't, maybe this does need infill. I don't know. I just, I'm always thinking of ways I can save plastic, uh, for more prints. Cause if I remove the infill, maybe I'll shave 20 minutes off and use less plastic, whatever the case. Okay. So you have your model, uh, here and it's looking great. It's just the way you want it to go back to prepare. And then, then we can go, uh, save disc. Or if you drop this down, I can save it to my library of Cura. Or if I had my SD card and uh, plugged into my computer, it would say, do you want to write to the removable memory? Either way is fine. Uh, I usually just do it save to disk so that I have a copy locally on my hard drive. And then I back that up of all the things that I want uh, to print. So put this in Dragon Box. Now your uh, C, your printer typically will use the G code. At least my Ender does. I don't know what other. This is the first time I remember doing this. So <clears throat> my um, my Ender three V three SE has a limitation of twenty characters, um, and so what I'm going to do is come in here and remove that little bit just so that I make sure that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. There we go. Um, and then I'm going to save that to my computer. And now the G code for the printer to understand how to make this is saved on my hard drive. And then I put my flash drive in my computer and I just copy that file over to it. Not a big deal. So that's, that's one part. We're going to clear the build plate and that's going to let us open up a brand new model. And I want to take a look at the lid. What's this end? Usually I, when I get a model like this, I'm like, well, what is all the parts? Now here's the end. So I don't know if I'd have to print that off as well. Clear the build plate. Look at end scales. I don't know what that's, oops. I don't know what this is all about. Uh, sometimes you'll get a model like this or a print like this that has multiple pieces and it's kind of a, <clears throat> a model that you put together. Let's take a look at the lid. That was the part that we're going to need to, yeah, it's a big one, 130 kilobytes. Uh, because it is detailed. If we take a look at this, look at all the details in that. <laughs> this is, this is a part that I would probably, uh, rather, uh, print in resin, I think would come out really nice in this. Let's slice it and see how long that's going to take a long time. Cancel that just because of the complexity of it. It's going to take, uh, the software quite a bit to try and figure out how to slice that up. Um, but if you take a look at, let's clear the build plate. And if I open up, uh, if I go open from disk and then go into my other files, games, um, <clears throat> here's another one, deck boxes, Magic the Gathering deck box. Uh, this is, there's a bunch in here, but if we just go into magic box big what does that look like i think i just got this done i just just downloaded this one so this one's gonna be pretty cool it looks like it's gonna hold two two decks um and if i try to splice that it's gonna be a little crazy no i don't need a supports because this is all straight up uh, adhesion, let's keep it at 10% infill. Let's go ahead and slice this and see what happens. It's probably going to take a while because of the complexity. The more complex your model is, um, the more lines and G code data 
is going to be required for your printer to print that. It's probably going to be a couple, it's probably going to be like a 24 hour print on this. Not even going to wait. Let's pick a different one. Open from disk. Uh, let's go back into games and I'm doing this for Tim. Uh, where's the one that I really like? Here's a token bowl. I really like this. It's just a bowl. Uh, it's flat on the bottom and it's just a bowl that you could put your little game pieces in, uh, dice, it all, you know, whatever you're using, you know, potato chips, pretzels, whatever you want, uh, into this so that and it's con it's concaved you can't probably see it very well what if we go into preview that's not helping let's slice it up this isn't too bad i do use um infill on this and i'll show you why uh this is gonna take six and a half hours it's gonna use 109 grams of filament and it's gonna cost me uh two dollars and fifty cents if i hit preview here's what it would look like uh on on the lines the g-code um, and so one of the reasons I take a look at my preview before I save the G code, it's got 300 levels. And as I scroll down, we can see that, uh, there is a triangular infill. And the reason I have to have infill is once it gets to this point where it's starting to, uh, print the bottom of the bowl, it can't print in midair. Uh, otherwise it's just going to string. It's just going to be bad. So here we have to use infill so that as we're building up, we're going to have a spot right here where the code knows, okay, right now I'm going to have to start building this out. Uh, so that, cause I've got a bottom in the middle of nothing. Um, that's going to have to have support. Right. So then the infill all around the triangles that I'm using, um, as it builds up, it's going to one give support to the bowl, uh, so that it can build it out. Now, if I were to come back here and say infill density zero, which you can do, not every model needs infill. Again, just depending on what you're doing. <clears throat> so we're going to take that. Now we're going to come look at this. Uh, in our slice mode and you can see that it's hollow in there well what the heck is it going to print to <laughs> when it gets to this point there's nothing it, it can't print in mid-air like that uh, otherwise it, it's just not going to work and you could play around with this you could say well i don't want any infill but i want support uh everywhere right and so if I slice it again with support, there's a better chance that my build is one going to have all of the hanging elements needed. It's going to take three hours, 41. Uh, so now as we slice through this, did it not print? Supports tree everywhere. I've done this before and it put the tree inside the print. Maybe it's not going to do it here. Oh, I still have in, infill density at zero. That's what I wanted. Uh, so I probably wouldn't print that and waste it. I would probably make sure that I had at least 10%. I think the default's 20%. And if we go to 20%, let's take a look at this. A lot of what I've been doing so far before I print is screw around with a bunch of this stuff and really pay this is eight hours and 50 minutes because the infill is probably a little bit heavier. A lot more triangles going on. Uh, and I'm using 161 uh, grams. It's going to take eight, almost nine hours. Cost me a lot more. So play around with this stuff. Um, like I said, get it to where if you're not, like if this isn't going to support barbells or something, there's absolutely no reason for me to have 20% infill when I can do 10%, save plastic, cut the time. Uh, it's going to have the supports that it needs internally to build out the cup from out of nowhere so and again once you have that you save it to disk 
call it whatever you want, put it wherever you can remember, and save that G code file off. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much it. Go to things, find what you want, and um, unzip it, load in the STL file, fiddle around with your settings, um, and get to know your software however you like it and save that G code off.